In the last lesson, you were introduced to how to form enolates and enols. In this series of webcasts, we're going to take a look at the reactivity of enolates and enols, as well as other nucleophilic derivatives of the carbonyl group. Nucleophilic derivatives of the carbonyl group tend to be most reactive on the carbon alpha to the carbonyl carbon. This leads to a net substitution, typically, of a hydrogen atom, alpha to the carbonyl group, for some electrophile. There are two oxygen-containing nucleophilic derivatives of the carbonyl group that you should keep in mind. Under basic conditions, in which strong nucleophiles are commonly generated, the carbonyl group can form the negatively charged enolate anion shown here by deprotonation at the alpha carbon. Under acidic conditions, in which strong electrophiles and weak nucleophiles tend to be present, the tautomeric enol form of the carbonyl can form by the movement of a proton from the alpha carbon to the carbonyl oxygen with a shift of the double bond from between carbon and oxygen to between carbon and carbon. Enolates are ambident nucleophiles, which means that they're reactive at more than one position. If we imagine drawing a resonance structure of the enolate shown here, we can imagine that the enolate is nucleophilic not just on carbon, but also on oxygen. So by pushing electrons from the oxygen onto carbon and breaking the pi bond in an n to pi star type interaction, we generate a structure that looks simply like the deprotonated form of the carbonyl group. These two resonance structures show us that the enolate can be nucleophilic either on carbon, as this resonance structure shows, or on oxygen, as the original resonance structure shows. Most electrophiles will tend to go for the carbon. And this is good for us because it allows a means for the formation of carbon-carbon bonds. However, you should be aware that silo electrophiles and other very strong electrophiles will alkylate on oxygen, or in other words, will be attacked by the nucleophilic oxygen atom and form an oxygen X bond. Hopefully by now you're familiar with the idea that the enol is the tautomeric form of the carbonyl group and it represents the movement of the alpha hydrogen from carbon to oxygen with a double bond shift. The enol is a nucleophilic functional group, and we can imagine derivatives of the enol in which we've replaced the enol oxygen by nitrogen. These derivatives are called enamines because they represent a double bond attached to an amine group. For enamines in which one of the R groups is a hydrogen, the enamine represents the tautomeric form of the imine functional group, which is simply a carbonyl derivative in which the carbonyl oxygen has been replaced by an NR group. In the next webcast, we'll take a look at the reactivity of enamines and discuss some of the advantages they have over enol nucleophiles.